It is the rule of law that underpins our social democracy for the benefit of our society. Our law must be just, but it must always be current, up-to-date and reflective of the needs of society. And for me, that is the relevance and importance of the rule of law, but also of the need for law reform. I'd argue that lawyers have an obligation to be committed to not just law reform, but law improvement. Reform can be a whole lot of things. Well, law reform is important to me as a lawyer, as a former judge, uh, as a citizen. But in my own life, growing up uh, in Australia in the 1950s and 60s as a young gay boy and man, uh, I knew that contrary to all the glorious things with, that were said at law dinners and uh, in law faculties, the law wasn't always just. The law was sometimes irrational and unjust. And that taught me a lot of lessons through my personal experience. For me, the relationship between research and law reform is, is symbiotic. For much research, there is a drive towards wanting law reform or seeking to prompt law reform. That's sometimes explicit, sometimes implicit. And in turn, then law reform initiatives, be they in formal commissions or parliamentary committees, will oftentimes rely upon academic works. Sometimes you can achieve law reform through media work, through putting pressure on people to achieve change, not just by a learned report that is delivered to government and thumps on the table and sadly too often gathers dust and never gets implemented anyway. So you can achieve law reform in a whole lot of different ways. Harking back to my earlier career, I was told I could not have a job because in fact I was a woman and the solicitor in charge did not believe women should do that type of work. I complained about what I was told and the fact that I was excluded from consideration, notwithstanding my experience and qualifications. I wasn't given that job, but a short time later, another woman in that same office was appointed. So in a backdoor way, I achieved some personal law reform. One of the first times I can recall my research having real world potential law reform impact and traction was the citing of my research on biometric evidence by the Equality and Human Rights Commission in argument before the UK Supreme Court. There's always trepidation on an academic's part that one's research won't have real world impact. So to have that kind of traction was really important and certainly uh, sticks in my mind. One uh, significant case that remains with me it's a case called Certain Children. Comments were made during the course of the hearing and later in the judgment, which I would suggest made it clear to the government that it was inappropriate for children to be located in high security prisons. To my knowledge, that has not reoccurred in Victoria. There has not been a change in the legislation, but comments by the bench as to the disposition of the children was in effect a form of law reform. Eddie Marbo is the best example of that. It's much misunderstood, although he was the lead plaintiff in the litigation that was successful in the High Court. His personal claim failed. He did not win his land rights, but land rights were established for Dave Passy and Edmund Rice, the other litigants with him. So that was an example of where you can lose the case but win the cause. And it's because the High Court of Australia, before my time on the High Court, in Marbo against Queensland, through the advocacy of Ron Caston, after whom the Caston Centre is named, it's through the judiciary that things in the matter of land rights began to change. But there is still much to be done. and. I am sure that Monash Law School will continue to be at the very centre and front of the movement for change. Well, as a student, Professor Waller was uh, 
inspirational and has remained a very significant figure in, in my life in the law. I had to prepare for him an essay on a niche area of law reform of my own choosing. And uh, when I delivered the essay, he told me that my field research was very good and very interesting, but I needed to ensure that my focus on law reform was much sharper and much clearer as to what the law was and what the law should be. That resonated with me forever. Uh, Professor Louis Waller was the Law Reform Commissioner. He was the driving force behind Victoria's world first IVF laws. Uh, as one of my producers said this morning, wow, I wouldn't have kids if it wasn't for him. Oh. And a lot of people, if you've ever used IVF or you know anyone who's used IVF or you think IVF is a good thing, you've got Louis Waller to thank. Academics serve a public role, public function. We're paid for by taxpayers, so I think it's important that we are doing work that has implications for the wider public and connecting with law reform initiatives is, is one way of uh, realising that. I sort of wanted to get closer to that process and see how people go about changing the law and um, been lucky enough to be placed um, working with a Victorian Parliament Committee. It's exciting being in the Parliament and just knowing that the work I'm doing is really important and that it probably will have a real impact on um, Victorians' lives. Well, I'm delighted to have come to Monash uh, and to have spent a day in the company of Morty Bromberg. He will be a fantastic new president of the Australian Law Reform Commission and I have every confidence that he and colleagues will do well. So I send him a message of greetings and uh, success. He is, after all, an alumnus of the Monash Law School. So he will know where the bodies are buried and what can be done to improve our legal system, uh, not just for the big and powerful, uh, not just for the popular, but for all Australians.